Jennifer <laughs> Arnold, J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R-A-R-N-O-L-D. Okay. And I'm the medical director at Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital of Simulation. Okay. Uh, I should probably say that again. The medical director of Simulation at Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital. Okay. And um, since we have a tiny little space on the yeah. bottom of the screen, <laughs> um, that little, that little, that whole big that thing. What do you guys area? want me to say? Oh, um, should we just put all medical director, comma simulation? Okay. Oh, there you go. Okay. okay. That works. Okay. Perfect. Um, and how long have you been a physician? So, oh gosh, now you're making me think back. It's, I have actually been a physician since 2000, the year 2000 is when I graduated, so that is now 17 years. Oh my I'm gosh. I'm getting old. No, not at all. You're just taking a peek. This is, this is a good time. This is a good time. That's right. Um, so let's, let's start with, um, let's start with the show because yes. I know that everyone has a, a, a fascination with the show. Everyone's, everyone loves it. Um, it, your life started becoming sort of, a, a the reality, you know, the subject of a reality show <laughs> and it's led you all over the country and now it's led you here. So yes. what, what is it then like? Um, to kind of go on that journey? Well, definitely being on a reality show, a television show about our lives was nothing that I ever imagined I'd be doing uh, in my lifetime, but it came to us uh, not long after I, uh, w well, not long after I was engaged with my husband and mm -hmm. uh, I was on a, a GMA show, maybe you don't want to say that, but uh, <laughs> back in the day in New York and about my life as a physician and a little person because, um, you know, it's rather unusual to, there are very, you know, unfortunately, fewer, fewer physicians that have disabilities out there. And so I uh, did that segment and then after that was approached by a production company to um, initially film my upcoming wedding with my husband, but mm -hmm. we declined. We actually declined for about a year. <laughs> A little nervous about all of the, you know, uh, potential implications of being on television with sure. our personal lives. Mm -hmm. But eventually we felt comfortable with the production company and they realized that we, um, you know, were wanting to do something positive but not sensational. Mm -hmm. And uh, they pitched to us doing a show on our lives. And at that point we both thought, well, that'll last an episode. Um, and then here we are now, oh, season geez. 9 <laughs> into 10. <laughs> I was just yeah. say, let's count all the, they wore you down for they a year. They did, they did. And then finally you acquiesced and you're like, all right, let's do this. Let's do this, yeah. Um, and your husband, he is also, am I correct, is he also in the medical field or he's? He actually is in the business field, okay. but when I met him, he actually had a medical uh, device consulting firm. So he okay. actually was kind of in the healthcare world, so okay. has a lot of knowledge about that. At one point, uh, was thinking about going into medical school. Smart man, he went towards business. So. Um, but ironically now, since we moved to Houston uh, about nine years ago, he decided uh, after a couple of years that it was too hard to maintain that business with his partner in New York. and decided he's the entrepreneur to start a whole new business and a new field and has a pet boutique in Houston, which we're hoping to franchise on one day, have one here. Oh my yeah. gosh, that <laughs> so is fantastic. Crazy. That's great. Yes. <laughs> well, okay, so so now in this in this roundabout crazy adventure, <laughs> you ended up in Tampa at a yep. wonderful, wonderful Absolutely. Uh, hospital that's, that's known all over the world. Absolutely. Um, what has it been like to be, now you're here at All Children's, you know, Johns oh. Hopkins, that's a, a, a really, yes. really well-renowned name. So tell me about that. Well, you know, when the opportunity arose to, to look at a position here at Johns Hopkins All Children's, I was thrilled because um, this institution means a lot to me, both personally and professionally. Obviously, Johns Hopkins facilities are, uh, you know, top of healthcare and mm -hmm. I was also fortunate to have gone to medical school mm -hmm. at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore, was a patient there as a kid growing up. You know, my parents traveled from Florida my entire life mm -hmm. to go to Baltimore for all my surgeries. And so Hopkins has always had a near and dear place in my heart. Um, and then, of course, having been born in St. Petersburg, mm -hmm. having uh, actually been a patient in the NICU at All Children's mm -hmm. many, many years ago, um, I knew that that combination and the opportunity to do what I love here was just something I couldn't uh, not look into, A, and then if I was given the opportunity to be here, um, I think Bill and I both knew right away we were going to be coming to St. Petersburg again. So it was a, it's a homecoming. It's a homecoming for me on so many levels. I mean, not only was I born here, did I spend every vacation I could on the beaches here in St. Petersburg, but my husband and I were actually married here. So this place is really important to our family. Oh, <laughs> and you know, what is, it, what is it like to do what you do at a place that is so near and dear to your heart? I mean, it, it brings uh, a day in the life and a, day, a work day to a whole other level because it's a part of you. Absolutely. 
So, you know, now I've been here a week, or t technically two. Yeah, I guess I can say two. I've been here two weeks, and every day I come in, I just, I'm, I'm happy, I'm excited, I'm thrilled. Um, the people here are so wonderful. Mm -hmm. And as I sit and I, you know, do, do work, I, I, I think sometimes to myself, I can't believe I'm here. Like, this is, I was once a baby here, and this is Johns Hopkins again. I'm part of the Hopkins family again. And so it just, um, it just makes me very proud inside to be a part of this institution. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Everyone should be so lucky to have that, that feeling at the it, beginning of their work day. It's, um, it's important. <laughs> what, what is simulation? Because I know that it's, um, it's something that I don't know a whole lot about, so I'm hoping you can educate us and we can educate our viewers. Absolutely. So healthcare simulation, it's really a technique. Um, it's a tool that we use now in healthcare to help train typically healthcare providers in high risk, rare, uh, complex procedures, situations, clinical scenarios, everything from delivery of bad news to um, how to code and resuscitate a, a dying patient. Okay. Um, it could be a very specific procedure, such as a surgical procedure, removal of a brain tumor, um, to practicing how a team might work together in a disaster emergency situation. So it can be one-on-one -on -one or a whole huge hospital involved in a simulation. And so what I love about simulation is that it's all about education and improving the good care that we already give. So, um, you know, I, I, I love bringing new learners, like new doctors, and nurses and, and residents in, but I also love training experienced clinicians who have been practicing for 20 years mm -hmm. because in healthcare, you know, one of the leading causes of medical errors are actually deficiencies in communication and teamwork. Um, and I don't know if many people know this, but uh, medical errors are now, unfortunately, the third leading cause of death in our nation. And knowing that the majority of those uh, deaths are due to a problem with how we work as a team, mm -hmm. well, then that's really an opportunity where I feel simulation can, you know, improve that, decrease those medical errors, decrease uh, unnecessary deaths, both in kids and adults. And, um, you know, there's no other there's no other training tool out there where we can practice how we work together as a team other than simulation. Um, and aviation, nuclear power, military, they've known this for quite some time. And healthcare is now learning from all of their experience and becoming more safe and reliable as high risk industries. And we're applying it to healthcare. That's awesome. So <laughs> does this mean that um, people will attend seminars or um, they will now be, is it, is it FDA required? I mean, how, how does it go through the process? Good question. Simulation is actually not yet required. Um, it is more and more embedded into medical schools and nursing schools curriculum, mm -hmm. but once you become a practicing professional, it's not yet required. Um, so we're really fortunate here at All Children's that they saw the value and the need. They've had a simulation program for years, um, and they're now putting uh, their, all of their resources into developing an even bigger program, which I'm so excited mm -hmm. to be a part of and to help lead. So when you think about the fact that it's not required, but all the benefits that it's been shown to have, um, I hope that it's only time before it is uh, really spread throughout our nation and, and globally. Um, there actually is a very large movement, particularly within the world of pediatrics, to develop simulation programs so that we really can improve the quality of care that we give. And literally, it could be anything from um, uh, neurology to uh, just ER care to, I mean, and, and, and all points in between. And doctors are brought in here and simulated with some of the yeah. uh, high-tech high -tech mannequins, <laughs> yeah. High-tech mannequins. And, <laughs> patients, and, and the, yeah. the whole process, you'll just go through it. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and, you know, we bring in multi-disciplinary uh, you know, teams, mm -hmm. and they get to rehearse and practice exactly uh, the high-risk situations that they might encounter in real patients. And we do it with a lot of use of technology. So high-tech mannequins that breathe, that turn blue, that doctors and nurses can put breathing tubes in and, and give medications to and do oh, chest wow. compressions, listen to heart and lung sounds. They're almost like real humans. Um, and as the technology grows, we're going to have even more capabilities to make that more realistic environment for training. Um, one of the things that I'm super excited about in our new center that will be opening in the fall mm -hmm. is that we'll have 3D printing capabilities. And so oh. that provides the opportunity for you know, a, a physician, a nurse, a team to rehearse a patient-specific procedure, meaning that exact brain tumor that might be in a child, the location, the physiology can be printed, and the doctors and nurses can rehearse the surgical removal of that tumor in a simulated environment, learn from any mishaps that they might not have expected, right. 
and then prevent them from happening and then be better prepared for their actual surgical removal of the tumor on the child. Oh my gosh, that's intense. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool though. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's the future in, in my mind. I get excited when uh, we, we talk about those things because that's how we're going to deliver better care and that's where, we're, that's where the future of medicine is going. Well, I can see it in your eyes and on your <laughs> face that you have a lot of passion for it and that you're super yes. excited and that's, that's half the battle right oh, there is getting yes. someone to, you know, again, light that fire under someone <laughs> and get excited. Thank um, you. Okay, so, so now that you're here and you're kind of putting yep. everything into place, um, the team is actually going to follow you from the show yes. <laughs> all around, like your yep. whole life. I mean, and so what is that like? Your marriage, you have two children and... That's a little bit like in the bit, you know, don't get in my business, but they're yes, in your business, yes. so what's that like? <laughs> oh, goodness, yes. Well, you know, since the show is following us through the move and, and everything that we're going to be doing here in St. Petersburg, it's definitely an added level of busyness, I would say. Um, you know, we, we have a great team, and thankfully we've made it work, oh, my goodness, for the last nine years now. Uh, I can't believe it. And so I, um, I'm i sure that that transition will go smoothly as possible, but, you know, it'll be exciting, too, because they're going to get to see us do all kinds of new things that we never had done before and exploring St. Petersburg, different restaurants and the mm -hmm. things to do, beach, you know, swimming and, and, and boating. And then, of course, you know, my, my new work life here. And so yeah. seeing us, uh, you know, progress to growing the simulation program and, and, and a little bit of work in the NICU, too. I mean, I think wow. it's it'll be busy. And my kids, they're, they're, you know, so far they're doing well with it. So, so we just kind of go with it. What's that like to see your life on screen? Is it weird sometimes? Definitely weird. I, I actually don't enjoy watching our show <laughs> other than just to make sure we didn't do anything embarrassing <laughs> on TV. Um, but you know, actually, I will say right now, they're the best home videos and to see the kids, that's what makes my heart melt. So, you know, we, we're so fortunate. We have the best home videos you could ever imagine. They're edited. They have music in the background. And, I mean, I have our children's adoptions both um, forever uh, captured. And it's, mm -hmm. it's really, uh, really great. My, my kids now ask, can they see when we went to China or when we went to India? They want to watch their, the, the processes that we went through.